The sages, the only men try that nobody takes the wrong path in life. Nobody goes on that path of what we would call evil or wrong ways. That we inspire everyone to become a sajjan, to become a noble person. To live in society, whether you live as a holy man or whether you live as a householder, whichever path you choose to live as an ideal human being, a human being who inspires first the Vamsa and then others to live an uplifting life. And thus bringing peace into society. And no matter who you talk to, even the so-called evil or wicked person, when you talk to them, what would you like? They would also tell you that you would like peace. You would like to be peaceful people. But for whatever reason, circumstances have made them go the wrong way in life. And we often sometimes think that punishing them or doing something wrong to them is what will correct them. But over the last few months, years, as I think about this and I look at the different systems that exist around the world, we find that societies that are advanced, not materialistically, but in thought, but in understanding, they try a very different method. They try a method of sort of taking care of you in a way so that you don't end up going the wrong way, but you end up becoming a noble person. Each country, each place has its traditions wherein they will talk to you, they'll explain to you. For example, growing up in India, we would have large families. We would have uncles, we would have aunts, you have grandparents from the father's side, from the mother's side, you would have cousins. So any one of us that went wayward, or would start to go off the path. 
somebody from the family would gently, lovingly, kindly remind you that you are getting off your lane, you're getting off your path, and slowly and kindly bring you back, steer you back to where you should go in life. And so when we think of our society today that we are living alone in some place, in some apartment or wherever it is, and when our mind starts to go the wrong way, Google cannot help us in that moment. Because Google doesn't exactly know what is going on in the biochemistry of this human being. So you need such temples, ashrams, holy men, Go sit in their company, go sit in their presence. I often say to people, go sit with Swamiji. Go maybe just vacuum the hall of his temple. Or come here, do some seva. Whatever it is that needs to be done. That something happens in a place where chanting takes place, where mantras are sung, where holy men come and sing the glory of God. That as much as science claims it's simply a chemical imbalance, it's not simply a chemical imbalance, it's an imbalance. And it's an imbalance that needs to be corrected. So Swamiji has said, let's talk about the holy men in society. We have to think of what role the holy men play in our society. I tell people, even if a monk is sitting in a place and just doing japa, just repeating the name of God, he is still putting divine vibrations into that earth. He's still putting uplifting vibrations into that earth. So wherever we are, those vibrations travel and we connect to them. Driving just now, Devi, I understand to tell her niece, always try and find homes and apartments down below. Don't live always on the 50th or the 100th floor. Come down to earth, touch earth, be grounded. And I always tell people who want to do fire ceremonies, havans, I said, do them where that fire ceremony or that haven can touch earth. Don't always go up. If possible, then come down. Let that which you are doing, that satkarma, that uplifting action that you are performing, let it go into the earth. So not only do you benefit, not only does your family and friends and your society benefit, but through the earth, that vibration travels. For those of you who read about dolphins or whales and all of this, you realize that they have what is called sonar technology. And when they communicate to each other, they communicate through their own technology, which they understand. Which means nature, or this earth has that built into it. So all we need to do as human beings is connect to that existing technology. We would call it grounding. Electricity does that. Electricity says when you get a shock, ground. So in the same way, when a human being actually loses his or her grounding, and he no longer knows what is the balance of life, then issues take place. And the most amazing thing I find that one of the most advanced countries, the United States of America, which should be a leading example for human beings as an uplifting place for a human being. Yes, people come from all over the world to have a good life to make money, to earn something. But then we also have to look at the other aspect. Okay, there is the physical wealth, but what about the internal wealth? What, what are we earning on the inside? Because all of this, we all know, is going to stay behind. No matter how many awards I may have won, no matter how much wealth we have, as Swami Satyananji was saying, all those that you luck, whether it is your cows, whether it is your cars, whether it is even your beloved wife with all the various names that he used. Even in Indian tradition, the wife stays at the door of the house and doesn't accompany the body to be cremated or to be burnt or to be whatever it's the ceremony that you perform. 
I don't remember now, but I remember back in 2009, I came here, one of our trustees, Sitaram Patel, had passed. And there was only one place where you could cremate in Hindus. And the person who was managing that had probably done so many Hindu cremations. He asked, who is the priest? Who is the son? I was impressed. I said to somebody, I said, how does he know? They said, because all Hindus come here. He knows that there is a priest. The priest will perform the Antyashti karma, the karma or the puja or the ceremony that's performed at the end. He knew that the eldest son or the son would be the one. There is no fire lighting, but he would put the switch on. So there are traditions which when we live in a modern society, we wonder, do they still mean anything? I think, yes, they mean something. Each one of us, whether it's a swami, whether it's a priest, whether it's the board of members of this temple, whether it's you who come as devotees, each one of us has a role that society has given. And we must all fulfill those roles. We must all fulfill those roles in the best way possible. And then be that noble person. Do what you think, what you feel is best. And then when you are that noble person fulfilling, performing your role, what will you do? You will bring peace. You will bring that balance into this society. So if this temple has existed, and these priests have lived here for these many years, and these deities are here, think, where is it that we come at the end when no doctor has been able to do anything for us, when no court of law, no lawyer, nobody has been able to do anything. We come here and we say, okay, there is nobody else. At least you listen to me. We come to have a conversation with the divine. And we say, okay, come on, help, do something. But then we have to have our eyes open, our ears open, our senses open. Because God sends help. I'll tell a very simple story you hear that once there was a flooding, a man cries out and he says, send me help. A boat comes by. He says, no, 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 I'm waiting for your divine help. I don't want a boat. The water continues to rise. He climbs up. As he climbs up, a helicopter comes. He says, no, 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 I'm waiting for divine help. And so ultimately he died. And when he ends up there, Baba Muktananda would call it at the immigration counter of God. He complains, you know, I prayed. I've lived a pious life. I went to Hindu center regularly. I visited Swami Harishchandra Puriji. I went to every Sadhu Samaj, uh, Samagam that took place. What was the use? You didn't benefit. You didn't come to help me when I wanted help. And so God says, I sent a boat. In America, it will first be the 911 that comes, the police and the uh, fire and all of that. And then I sent a boat, I sent the helicopter. He said, no, but I was waiting for divine help. He said, that was divine help. Those were my agencies or agents or people that I sent to take care of you. But you didn't see that. Here's a verse up here. Yomam pashyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pashyati. Tasyaham na pranasya. He who sees me everywhere and sees everyone as that divinity and sees that there is nothing that is not divine, I will make sure that he will not perish and he doesn't have to worry. He will be taken of that individual, that person will be taken care of. So when we come to the holy men, when holy men have come to our society, to our home, to our temple, to our town, we simply, I tell people, have to just go and sit in that presence, in that company. Whether we understand, we don't understand, whether we get it or we don't get it, something else, according to that technology of nature, takes place. And we will be blessed, we will benefit. And the fact that this has existed for so many thousands of years, and not just in the Indian tradition, I would say because I've traveled the world, I have met monks 
from different traditions. There are monks even today in other traditions who are doing sadhana in whatever that they have learned, or whatever they have understood. And the purpose of each holy man, whether he is in these robes or whether he is in normal clothes, a person who has become a sarjana, a noble person, that person, wherever he or she goes, he brings peace. And so therefore we pray, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May peace, peace, peace be with you. So we thank everyone who has come here from society. And we thank everyone else who has also come from society. But we don't come from ourselves, society. We are also from the same society. But we have for this lifetime been appointed that you have a job to do. You have a job to do is go around and do what you do in the best way. So we thank Hindu Center for always uh, hosting all of us and for their love and all of their graciousness. And uh, we pray that all of the members of this community here uh, help the temple to complete uh, their construction and uh, expansion works that has been going on for I think two, three, four years maybe now, five. And uh, ultimately this is what will remain. All of us will be gone. Nobody will remember us. But everybody who, especially your young children and grandchildren, you must make sure, as some of you were saying last night, it is important that you must bring them. If the Indians who grew up, you know, in India, our parents would just take us grab us by the neck and say, Pranamda, bow down here, bow down here, bow to this one, bow to this one. We had no choice. But bowing, 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 we haven't learned to be, there's nothing else, bow. <laughs> Something will happen. And therefore, here we are, so many years later, realizing, understanding, knowing at some level that we have received something that something has happened in our lives. We have benefited in some way. We are at peace. And most importantly, we are alive. So thank you all. Now I'll <laughs>